Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Seat Story number six. I am Raven. We have the next match coming up, and bringing you the cast is going to be the one and only Gara, and of course, Ecop. Gara, how are you doing today? I'm feeling excellent. <laughs> wow, with, with the with the, <laughs> the little eyebrows as well. That was a uh, very central there, Gara. Good job, Ecop. How are you doing? Excellent. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be a fantastic cast, guys. Looks like it is just going to be me casting alone by the sounds of it. But we have got a cool match coming up. It is going to be Savitz versus Hafu in the winner's match from Group A. So the winner will actually go on. So that's looking really good. But before we get into it, we just need to check in and tell you about one of the sponsors we have. Uh, it's actually on here, so I need to put it up now. One second. So the sponsor is actually called uh, Mifcom, and it's a German-based... Uh, like high-end computer building uh, company, and they, they'll build you, custom build your PC. You pretty much have a shopping list to select exactly what parts you want on. They, uh, they build it up for you and ship it out, so it's kind of awesome. I think they're mainly focused in Germany, so for all you German viewers, you can get good PCs from here. We can see all the options, even pre-built options as well for some uh, pretty awesome gaming rigs, depending on how much money you want to spend. Have you guys got a lot of money in your rigs? Yeah. It's like, who doesn't need a high-quality gaming PC? Yeah, exactly. about right. about 2,000 and you're good for a couple of years. Yeah, and then you have to just rotate out again. But now these guys uh, pretty much do ev uh, everything. They support Home Story Cup as well, so it's awesome. They're really helping, uh, helping out these events and making them happen. So be sure as well to go on the Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Mifcom, and give them a like so you can keep up with everything. You can see the page there now. So, yeah, just give them a like. I can't quite read all of this because it is in German. I'm sure... Uh, you guys could help out a lot more than I can, but nothing too crazy. So, yeah, thanks a lot to Mifcom, and we can start going into the match when the players are ready. So, yeah, Savitz versus Hafu. Have you guys watched the previous games from today? Yes, I did. I actually did not watch the first one. I arrived here at, like, 2 p.m. But I watched the uh, one from my former teammate, Hafu. Uh, how she destroyed Torolk was uh, a sight to behold. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Those uh, four attack minions against Priest that we saw seem pretty reasonable. But just to give you a quick summary, Ecop, Savitz 3 0 with uh, Reno Lock. So, uh, you know, one of the powerhouse decks. But, oh, wow, look at this. Uh, Savitz, is he actually, as soon as the match was over, we went outside and he was like, feels good to start the tournament 3 0. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I bet he does. So he's loving it at the moment. But obviously, Hafu went 3 1 as well. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what do you think of these uh, players' decks? We saw Hafu bringing the, the sort of. Yeah. Uh, the the coon sort of uh, combo drew it. Have you had a chance to play that? So that's going to be very interesting because there were two very one-sided series uh, for the winners finals, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's and there's Hafu looking fantastic okay, as always. Yeah, looking looking sharp. <laughs> yeah. Very focused. Yeah. Okay. So. Not blinking once. <laughs> very focused. Yeah, the coon drew it. I think it's it should be too slow in my opinion, right? It's like a too. Um, too many cards you require for the combo, but it is it makes sense if you leave Reno Lock open. It's yeah. it is supposed to hard counter that matchup, and yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I hope that some people also can yeah consider that in their lineups for the Seed Story Cup to bring something new to the table if possible. Kundruid is not that new, but it's still like it's amazing. still it's fresh, right? It's yeah, it's, new. it's fresh and super fun to watch, right? If this crazy combo goes off. Yeah, and I think that's what Seat Story is about a lot of the time, isn't yeah. it? Just bringing cool, fun stuff. I mean, you know, we saw, for example, last time, Frodan with his Bogchamp deck that made uh, some some waves. Have you brought anything crazy, Ecop? Um, I can't tell right now. Oh, but you'll come on. You'll you will definitely if you brought something like crazy or not. That doesn't give away. You will, you will definitely see it later on today when I uh, attempt to crush Forsen. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that would be. I, I like uh, when, we talk, when we're talking about druid, right? Like, there's the kun druid, as of course the jade, jade druid that everyone knows. There's also um, aggressive approaches to druid nowadays as well, like uh, Jackie Chan once again, of course, shock, <laughs> bringing bringing the good old egg druid, and w if you include patches, where, so you can pretty much include patches anywhere yeah. <laughs> any, by this point. Uh, it actually fits the uh, deck quite well, so. Um, we can definitely go aggressive with Druid as well. Yeah, looks like we're getting into the game, though. Of course, it is Hafu versus Savitz in the Group A winners match. It's like Hafu is on the shame and Savitz on the rogue. Why does he have a PJ Salt? Like, why not? She's like the least salty person here. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe it's funny because it's completely oh, untrue. I see. Would you have that icon? Should be PJ S Sugar. <laughs> PJ Sugar. Yeah. New emote confirmed. That's an actual emote, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. 
Ah, oh, e cop, you know everything. That's why we bring you on this casting desk. You're the oh, never mind that. Of all knowledge. The infamous turn one, play two minions. Guess who's in charge? Yeah, patches all over the show. Oh, the wow, Jade Lightning is actually pretty good. The pretty mirror. good steal. That's going to be a very big one Cliff already. Mm -hmm. A 6-6 six, six, the least. Do you think you just do that? You just It's not really going too all in, but you know, half all in on the Van Cleef. Do you think you just do it because why not? Yeah, because most people will not have hacks and you just know it. Yeah. You know? Like now, hacks will be pretty sweet for this, but if you know that he will not have hacks, then it's like... You you feel more confident even to do it. Yeah, we saw Strivecro earlier playing a mid range shaman that had hexes in it, but uh, I uh, we did see Hafu shaman as well, so that didn't really look like it had any. It was more of the normal sort of pirate aggro build. So yeah, not too bad at all there. Savitz going for the Van Cleef, and now not got too much of a follow up though. And she snap played the spirits. Like she didn't even think about it for one second. Is there anything to think about, darling? Well, rolling spell damage and then lightning bolting and attacking it, but this is a little bit safer. Yeah. So... Oh, there's the card she needed a turn ago. That Lava Burst along with the Spirit Claws would have been able to deal with the Edwin. If, if you don't have Hex, this is the closest you, you will get to yeah. deal with the 6-6 six, six Edwin. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about the spirits being bad, it's just that the overload also really punishes you for the for the next turn. I, I guess she can like clear with bolt and the face tank. But yeah, it's not the prettiest turn in the world. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? It's it's really rough uh, with the, the pirate package being in rogue. Really annoying because they can just always have a weapon available. So uh, the the buccaneer is always active. So it's such a pain. And as soon as you deal, deal with, with that early game, then they come with the auctioneer. Yeah, then they do rogue stuff, yeah. which is like even more annoying. And also just this jade lightning that was pulled from the swash burglar, I think is going to get some uh, really good value going forward in the game. Yeah, Edwin Edwin Van Cleef in general has just become so strong now with the departure of big game hunter, the departure of silence. Um, and also with the arrival of counterfeit coin, yeah, it just became so I've, insane. I've already seen many screenshots of like 12, 12, 14, 14 or something like Edwin Van Cleef on turn one, yeah. and you just like, okay. We try to figure out what the biggest Van Cleef possible is in one, right? Uh, you can because you can triple coin, and then you yeah. can prep fan, prep fan. Okay, so what's that add up to? And then back backstab. We tried to figure it's out like, like 18, what the 18, <laughs> turn one, the biggest, yeah, the biggest turn, turn one when we pass. Oh. Turns out it's pretty big. It's normally big enough to win. Pretty sure like this guy's toes will make a video there. Yeah. <laughs> then you realize your opponent's running Earth Shock, and you just yeah. cry. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> so that's ten damage in hand. That's almost lethal. <laughs> Kappa. I mean, to be fair, it's what Havu's got to consider now because she doesn't really have many other resources at all to work with. So I think every single turn going forward is going to be trying to just push uh, Savits down to 10 or, you know, there and thereabouts to finish the game. Rogue doesn't normally run healing for any of those people who don't know. So that's actually a very interesting line because uh, she's going for the value game, right? But at this point, she will never be able to outvalue the Rogue. Yeah. So I'm not sure if the Lava Burst was correct on this oh. trick. Because she can only win with face damage, and yeah. with this line, I think she has like no win condition. Maybe, yes, it was maybe buy, to buy some time in order to draw into Doomhammer and then Rockbiter burst. It's, that's a big if, though. Yeah. And she even runs it as well. Yeah. that's the thing because a lot of lists aren't even running that combo. I mean, oh, the game the game already looks lost, but when you use up like basically your last win condition, your last draw, I feel like now she has like no way of winning this game. Yeah, it does seem like she doesn't actually run the Doomhammer, considering that she has Jade Claws and Spirit Claws. Yeah. That would be weapon overload right there. But even if you get the Doomhammer, like... Uh, You're a long way to go, yeah, with no, now no Lava Burst yeah. as well. There's actually a... It's, yeah, it's going to be a long road, and we can obviously see that Savitz has Auctioneer and plenty of cards to combo with and cycle further and further into the deck. This is looking really rough. Oh, Man, Crane actually said that when I was watch, watching his stream. It's rigged that whenever you... have uh, you fan of knives, you draw backstab with <laughs> the first card. Blizzard rigged that. Blizzard rigged. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Hmm? 
What, what, what do you it's, mean, Gar? It's, it's, it's <laughs> over. You can tell us what you mean. We're, we're all friends. I, d I don't see a line for Hafu to, to come back. I mean, she even used both Lava Bursts. I, I guess Jade Lighting to kill Doctrineer, but you will never be able to get board control. And how do you close out the game? Yeah. yeah. So, Savis was just able to outvalue Hafu so well here. Um, and basically, all of all on the back of that 6 6 Elwin on turn two. Yeah, and the problem is as well, even if. Uh, say flame with faceless drop down to say okay you know I'm gonna try and just you know get either get value trades or just hit them in the face like even though we can see saps in hand so he's drawn so much of his deck now that you've got to assume there's at least one knocking about our teacher helps is gonna help Savitz go wide as well he has got the backstab and can even just cold blood as well he's got everything to clear this board actually yeah, even just... Uh, he just daggers up, right, and trades into the totem and then uses the dagger to kill the 1-1. One -one. Hmm. Looking pretty good. I w I'm just thinking what he can do for the memes. <laughs> like he so, That's how <laughs> all you ever think is like, <laughs> how can I play this in the most meme -y way possible? <laughs> it's like... Meme maximization right there. <laughs> what can he evolve? Or oh, meme maxing. There mm -hmm. you go, that works. Definitely have to evolve for the memes. Did he? Oh, okay. For some reason, it looked like he backstabbed his, his uh, Buccaneer then for a second. I was like, okay, that is me, me, but you do still want to win this game. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, and so he's looking to close out the game yeah, on the he next can, turn here. There you can see how far he is ahead. That's in a matchup versus face shaman, he could just face tank it like that. Yeah, that is going to be it. You win this one, friend. Well <laughs> I mean, Hafu was behind for so many turns there. Savitz with a quick uh, AOK -okay to the camera. And he's, uh, he's looking pretty good now. He does have his rogue again. This is Last Hero Standing, just to remind everyone. Do you guys like, do you guys prefer Last Hero Standing over Conquest? I love Last Hero Standing. But it's not uh, a perfect format, for sure. It still has flaws. There is no perfect format. I like the strike format, man. Strike format's pretty good, Raven. Yeah. It's close to perfect. Close to perfect. Still not perfect, though. One day, we'll have a perfect format. Oh, finally. Here we go. <laughs> Beneath the grounds. The Reno counter. <laughs> oh, man. To be honest, he uh, not the first player, I think, in this tournament that's brought, you know, s at least similar strategies. I think, like, trying to heavily counter Reno in, in weird ways in terms of card draw, like, beneath the grounds or whatever, it's actually a viable tactic. We've seen the power of that deck at the moment. It's kind of dominating the ladder. Uh, Savic 3 0 with it in his first series as well, so not too terrible of a tactic, but we'll see how it pays off versus uh, Dragon Warrior. Maybe not as good. It's just so strong, man. Flame Imp. <laughs> Trades perfect into Finley. <laughs> that it does. High level analysis from Gara, as always. It's so good. <laughs> it's so that good. minion did, in fact, kill Finley and survive. It's so good. <laughs> patches, patches everywhere. But this is also pretty good. It's is fine. It? Beneath the grounds, man. Yeah, and not in this matchup. Happy Feast of Winter Bay. Oh, he's going for it, though. Getting those uh, f uh, three four fours right away. This is the definition of high rolling. Let's go. <laughs> just see give, the players there. Give us quick, some See both players quickly look over their screens at each other and just laugh. It's like, <laughs> yep, I just played beneath the grounds. <laughs> Nothing too crazy actually going on for Savitz here. He can get the Violet Teacher down, of course. Does have the Azure Drake to help curve out. But nothing too wild, whereas Hafu has got some pretty big turns ahead of her. Wait. Yeah. Wait, Savish banned Reno Lock? Hmm? Am I seeing this wrong or did he Maybe Hafu is not ha even playing Reno Lock. No, Hafu is no, definitely playing Reno Lock. Oh, she's playing Rogue. She's playing Rogue as her Oh. Form. Yeah. Well, so she we, we have no Warlock in the lineup. Ha Hafu's. Oh, sick. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, she might be the only player with no Warlock. Yeah, team. yeah. It's Rogue, Druid, Shame, and Warrior. And a Rogue Echo was the, uh, at the last tournament the only player with no Warlock. Again, I didn't bring Warlock this time either. How, how, how did you perform last time you come? I got top 8. Oh, that's not bad. Did everyone else just uh, quit the tournament? Yeah. Any group? Yeah, okay. they did. Oh, good, good. I made them quit. Uh, I, stared, I, stared true them, tactics. I stared them down and they couldn't resist. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so the dagger's going to clear up the monkey on the board here, but that frothing berserker is 
frankly pretty terrifying at this point. I mean, Savish is in a pretty pretty bad spot. I mean, yeah. on, th on turn three, he basically did spend three mana in a card to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Corrupt is so good as well. Slight overcount there's your Drake, but when it's buffing the frothing like this, yeah. uh, looks like it's going to be very difficult for him to come back here. Even now a sap isn't enough. Yeah, when it comes to curving out, um, like Hafu did that pretty well. In general, the Dragon Warrior just does it so well. It's one of the best uh, decks to curve out properly, minion-wise. Whereas Rogue kind of struggles with that. Usually the Rogue's curve uh, starts at 4. Yeah. Not with pirates anymore. Yeah. Come on. Pirates are good. Oh, yeah, backstab you again. <laughs> That's twice in two games. <laughs> Crane is a Phantom wizard. Phantom dives into backstab. Crane is a wizard, man. He is. I think he rigged it. So now it's gone from Heart of Blizzard to, to Crane. <laughs> okay, this is still looking rough. Double Cold Blood Backstab. Not exactly what Savitz wants to try and claw himself back into this game. And Afu still has just, you know, loads of cards. Just has so many options as well. Normally at this point, the Dragon Warrior is starting to just get, you know, a little bit low on resources, but it's like it's all going well so far. Another Frothing. So difficult to deal with. Are we going to see Fan fa of Knives into Backstab? Oh, in, into second Backstab. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I think so. I think this time he's got to go for Backstab first. Do it for science. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We demand to know. <laughs> it's so far 100% accurate on stream. Yeah, the old scratch of the head from Savitz. Seriously, does not know what to do here. At least he doesn't do the fail fish. Like... 90% of the players do. I was going to say, like, almost everyone else that yeah. plays Hearthstone. He's just scratching his head. Is there, like, a scratching head emote? No, right? That should be. It should be Savitz's head. It's like the thinking. Thinking, but opposite. So the hand's yeah. on top of the head instead <laughs> of underneath. <laughs> right, backstabbing first. I had the option to go for the attack on the prodding first to not take too much damage in case he has to attack it. <gasps> oh! Death into Whirlwind. Lethal. Ooh. Almost. Very in. It's great not enough. <laughs> Almost lethal. It's great value. Yeah, and that is going to be it for that game. Pretty, uh, Both games now being pretty straightforward, to be yeah. honest. Uh, both players kind of running away with it, evening it up 1-1. One, one. A lot of smoke involved. Yeah. Although I think both players have got some more, uh, you know, some slower decks. We saw Hafu, like we mentioned right at the beginning, with the sort of OTK style combo druid deck. That should be fun to watch. Savit's going on to his priest, and we didn't get to see his priest either. So, so far now he's played all three decks that he, uh, or at least three of his decks, sorry, that he had available to him. This matchup is very interesting. I think it's very close. It's also interesting to note that Savit didn't choose to go for the Reno Lock here. You could argue that the Reno Lock is also really good against Dragon Warrior. Mm. Yeah, I actually don't know which one I, I, I would think is better, to be honest. I've not played enough Dragon Priest. Depends how greedy the Reno Lock is. I think it was very, relatively greedy. Mm, I think as well, a lot of players are um, like teching Reno to beat the mirror, right? So then you're naturally going to have a worse matchup. In the more aggressive ones, Hafu, Shock Horror, uh, also, Warri Warrior off to a quick start as always. Yes, also, a, we, we saw we saw in the match before that Priest has such trouble dealing with four attack minions, and uh, Warrior does have pl uh, the Dragon Warrior has plenty of them as well. Yeah. He has a Drake, the Corcoran Lee, the Curator, also sometimes Frothing Berserker if you just leave it at four. Yeah, I think a lot of the times you even sort of skip damage on a Frothing on the turn you play it right, just to hit the four mark. So yeah. the next turn you build it up and then just smash phase. Hmm. I kind of like the Nether Spite here. I think you can afford to. And not really lose too much. And that's why it's still going to trade into the 1 1's fine. And yeah, but then again, on board, um, Havu does not have the kill on the Wormrist agent. So if he soaks up some damage, then um, uh, yeah, then he can just heal up and power shield and soak up some more. Yeah, it's pretty juicy to go for the uh, Wormrist agent. Interesting. It'd be cool. It'd be so, so he didn't go at all greedy here. He just picked the one drop. Well, I, you know, it would be interesting to see whether he. I guess he actually just plays the one drop over the power word shield now. It's a tough one. I didn't know whether he picked the well. Yeah. Just to have it as like a battery for the, you know, for the yeah. other dragons. But he only has operative in his hand, so yeah. Maybe he's just holding off. He can buy one more turn. Blackwing tech is actually a great draw for him. 
can curve out with tech and the whelp and just not really care too much about operative because in this matchup operative is actually just pretty slow if you can't taunt it up yeah but now the damage is going to start piling on here holy nova will clear in some of this at some point but uh, and he's playing now this newest version with the blackwing technicians i've seen more and more people playing this 3-5 three, for 3 is a pretty good card. Yeah, it turns out when you want was to... Was this what Colento was playing? When you want to curve out properly, then you got to play uh, an additional 3-drop, I think. And as well as an additional 4-drop in Dragon Priest. Yeah, I always liked it. And uh, we pretty much see the uh, the power of Dragon Warrior yet again. Just snowballing out of control. What did you... So what did you think of, of actually there of using the Corcoran to trade? instead of the monkey, because the monkey would have been at three, and the turn five is the Holy Nova turn. Yeah. It's the only thing that, like, half blows you out a little bit. But then again, Priest also has a lot of stuff that deals with three attack minions. Shadow oh, yeah, but if, if they pain the... Um, so if they pain the monkey that turn, then you're like, great, they've only got three mana. Like, what are they going to do about the rest of the board? The Corruptor, but yeah, just a, just a thought. I mean, a lot of four attack minions, which is the worst nightmare for Priest, yeah. are in Hafu's hand. Another Corcron. The Corruptor, not the Corruptor, but the Curator. Curator. It's like the worst nightmare for Priest. Well, Sabi's holding on pretty well, though, for now. But he still needs to, uh, he still has to reclaim board control somehow, and it's going to be tough with all the resources yeah. that Tapu is going to yeah. have available to her after the Curator. She's going to draw free here. I think um, I, I think Savitz realistically needs a Twilight Guardian, but even but probably needed it a turn ago because now it's just Hafu just has too many options here, too much power in hand. I like the value trade because she saw a Holy Nova by Savitz. Yeah, it's not like Dragonfire does much to the old as your Drake. Right, Dragonet Operative needs to find something useful here. Mm. Agul, one mana off here, but works. Kyrie Warx works as well, I suppose, but Savis will take damage in the process if he goes for that. Yeah, unfortunately he's forced to do it. He's going to take it anyway, right? So have to, big things are going to uh, happen for Savitze. He has board control now, though. Doesn't have any cards. <laughs> that's, that's normally a problem. He worked hard for it, though. He's on 14 and he has no cards. All right, well, if you have so many cards as Hafu does, you want to play as many as possible. Not not play just one big minion here, like the Dragnet Crusher, because if that gets dealt with, then you uh, yeah, you lose a lot of tempo. Yeah, I'm definitely going to fall behind, because you, you know a card like that can be dealt with very cheaply for the Priest, so they can actually develop other minions on top. Hafu is going to push the Vites down to seven, though. And there is not a Dragonfire Potion in sight, unfortunately, for Savitz. Does have the Twilight Guardian at last. So that is definitely going to help. So you're going to try and buff the, uh, yeah, buff the Frothing up. Use Shadow Word Death on the Frothing. Just leave the Alex Trazer's Champion up and then drop down the Twilight Guardian to be able to try and survive from any uh, smoke damage coming in. Actually leaves him open to a Corruptor because there's still one Corruptor left for Afu, I think. Even just Finley Hero Power could help out. Hmm. All right, digging for that new hero power here. Or is she? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like double four drop and the one drop play. He was just trying to decide which one. Yeah, he should uh, play. yeah. D uh, wait, 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 wait. All right, oh, okay. All right, with a steady shot, now yeah. Savis is forced to hero power every turn and hero power himself, that is. Yep. I guess the thing here is, although the uh, the Shadow of Death was used, so the Crusher feels way more safe. And also the Corcron... Wasn't that like lethal, though, with Corcron, Druid Hero Power, Ends of First Mate? Trade Corcron and Ends of First Mate plus Druid Hero Power into the end Alex Strasser champion phase. How do you kill the Twilight Guardian? Yeah, with Corcron and Ends of First Mate plus Druid Hero Power. It's six damage. Okay. And you had Alex Strasser's champion, you yeah, yeah. free HP. Oh, yeah. That's a good point, it was, right? It was it Druid Hero Power? Yeah. I, I didn't actually... Yeah, Druid was... Power. It was Druid Warlock Hunter, I think. All right. 
Okay. God, I never miss this lethal. Oh, never mind. Afu's not going to miss lethal with the Blackwing Corruptor draw, and that is uh, just the point she pushed the Vs into, that Hunt Hero power. Although, might not have been the optimum choice yeah. based on what we were just talking about, but it was definitely enough, as you said, it forced the Vs to actually have to heal himself every turn, and only healing to three every turn kind of sucks yeah. when you're against an aggressive deck. Looks like Hafu is on a pretty good road now to make it through. The winner of this match will go through out of their group. This is Group A as well, so... Group's going to be tied up pretty soon. An amazing performance for Hafu as well, right? Yeah. To go through winners. If she wins it. If she, if wins. she wins this One match. more. Yeah, he's got to win one more, and Savitz is on his ultimate comfort pick yeah. now. Savitz loves Reno Lock has played a hell of it as well, and has already had great success with it so far in this tournament. So we'll see if it's enough versus the Dragon Warrior. Got to top run, rank one legend with it. Mm -hmm. Was holding it for many, many hours. Yeah. One of the longest win streaks ever on rank one as well. It was like like six hours or something, maybe seven. The whole stream yeah. was basically rank one legend. It's crazy. The thing that impressed me the most is that like he kept playing. Yeah. So many players hit rank one and then like switch to a different server and they're like, okay guys, we're gonna stream some rank nineteen ladder for a few hours until I lose rank one. But not Savitz, no. No. He just carries on, gets his head down and, and carries on with that rank one grind. Balls to the walls. But this is also balls to the walls against Ooh. Dragon Warrior. Yeah. Against Pirate, against Pirate, this is fine, but against there was, Dragon. There were so many cards that yeah. are just great. Oh, <laughs> he's rolling the dice. But there's so many bad ones, right? Is any, there? Any of the mid-range creatures you pull just super sucks. On turn two? Or, well, three for half I don't know, if you pull, like, it. Blackwing Corruptor, it's kind of great. Ah. Is it? Come on, Savi. It's great for who? Don't tease great, us. Great for Hafu. <laughs> this is what I mean. Yeah. Like, it's good for Hafu. All right, it's going to be Corcoran. That was the weakest one, but it's still pretty good for Hafu, for sure. Yep. Although it's bad now because she doesn't have a four drop. Yeah. Ah. She will draw some. <laughs> of course. But if she, I think if she skips her four, that's also kind of huge for Savish. A right, very nice turn here by Savish. Yeah, very, very powerful. Yeah, if she doesn't pick up something, this might be enough for Savish to get the Drake out, you know, seize board control and protect it. Oh, the Vorex insta play. Yeah, Fireworks is okay. Um, definitely could have been a hell of a lot worse. But Savitz now has the uh, Twilight Drake and followed up by Kazakas. And a lot of the time against these more aggressive decks, if you can get Kazakas down at least half comfortably, the potential of five mana or one mana potion can really swing the game in your favor. Yeah, but the Drake is great here. Oh, yeah. Face. Oh, you definitely played Drake this yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah, 100%. He doesn't have a faceless. It's looking pretty good. He has the. The potion, if something big comes down. Okay, she's setting up. All right, what will Kazakas bring us? Mm, the one mana potion wouldn't do too much. No. You could, you could go for the three damage, two damage to everything. Oh, oh, he went for one mana it. potion. Look, there's the three damage. Yeah, that's the best one. And to damage to everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, Here's that's, the board. That's the spell power swipe. Can you pick deal three damage twice? Apparently. I oh, uh, no, never mind. He didn't. Oh, he mustn't have picked damage. it, right? Yeah, you can't yeah. pick oh. the same one twice. Damn, he didn't pick it. Interesting. This does. This opens up a pretty big board, though, and against yeah. Dragon Warrior, yeah, yeah. a lot of the times versus aggressive decks, if you can just get a bigger and stickier board, then you're going to win just through sheer trading value on it. Yeah, I guess the main problem also with that uh, spell damage swipe, like you said, is um, that it damages your board as well. Yeah. <laughs> so Savish really likes the one mana potion. Yep. In this po uh, tournament, he always picked it, right? In the world, the one mana potion is very, very strong. Actually, if you consider it to yeah. be to have like the value of a four mana spell, uh, sometimes. Even yep. in the Reno Lock Mirror, he picked the one mana and, potion. And also, the one mana potion is the most consistent one in terms of choice because you can't polymorph, so there's one less yeah. choice to fix in. It's like sixty percent to get one specific yeah. spell. Which is really high. <laughs> so, Savit's still got a reasonable board. That's another Corruptor coming out from Hafu, trying to pile on this pressure. But w this is one of the ways the uh, the Reno Lock actually wins this matchup. There's uh, a lot of the times the Dragon Warrior, you get into the point where you kind of either just hope they don't have Reno, 
or hope you've built enough of a board up where they reno on six, but you've just got so many minions anyway that you just punch them back down to that health and then they're in trouble. Uh, but it looks like Savit with the um, with the Blast Crystal, with the yep. Abyssal Enforcer, with Reno, of course, on uh, you know whenever he wants at this point. He's, he's got all the tools he needs to actually stabilize in this game. There's plenty of different lines here, and as you can see, he couldn't really decide if your rather goes for the Demon Fire or for the Taunt. I think this is okay, though, because he has Demon Wrath and Abyssal Enforcer. This Blackwing Corrupt is almost certainly dead next turn, and he can probably clear the board regardless of what comes out from Hafu. As well, Dragon Warriors aren't really playing Grom too oftenly, so as the, the Reno lock, you can kind of play with your health a little bit more dangerously than you used to be able to do. And that's what he does here, yep. with taking even more face damage, leaving the Zoot Wake up. So yeah. it's going to go to 13, go effectively down to 9 on board. We can see there's only one damage off, uh, out of hand. This is completely here. fine, because not even Rag would kill him, and that would be the highest damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bissell Enforcer has so much value, killing off those minions, and now it's still trading like effectively with what's on board. It's kind of nuts. And then I imagine, I imagine we're going to see uh, Reno come out next turn just for the safety. Oh, maybe there's just a Shadow Flame instead. Hmm. Yeah, we could hold on a turn longer for that uh, from, uh, from doing that Reno, unless Savi is, is expecting a surprise Grom. I actually. Hmm. No, it would be Grom Blood to Ika. You would never play around that in this situation. So he could actually use um, Deem oh, Demon Wrath. Wouldn't really. Demon Wrath would only clear the 4 1. It's not really good enough. Nice doing it, though. Yeah, I don't mind the Reno here. I mean, it's the only thing that screws you over, so might as well play around that. Yeah, and the problem yeah, is that this is regardless fine. Yeah. Like, without putting around something. I think everything else felt too awkward, right? If you want to try and like shadow flame the board, then you're not doing anything else that turn that's effective. So now you have like a stronger board than your yeah. opponent, and you're super safe. You can't die. As well, the faceless manipulator in hand from Savitz is actually uh, more flexible in this matchup because you don't really often re rely on the Leroy full uh, burst to actually clear this uh, clear this game up. So we might even see faceless on uh, a different minion, the curator, for example, if required. That is finally showing up on turn nine. This is going to be a juicy shadow flame. Oh my god! If he needs to go for it, the minion power is actually relatively low. I mean, faceless and shadow flame looks pretty juicy because you have the board. Yeah. Do you need to? Um, would you just trade into the curator as well? Yeah, you face as the curator and you trade your Reno and shadow yeah. flame the Reno. Yeah. You don't really need to, to save the Faceless for the Leroy combo if you can just pressure uh, down with minions anyway. Yeah, and you know, look at um, look at Hafu's health already. She has the Hunter Hero power now. Um, she's on 18, and you know, it, it soon just Leroy power overwhelming is going to be enough damage to actually finish up the game. So it's a really nice play here from Savitz clearing up the board and uh, I think almost secure in this game. With that. Yeah, having the initiate board initiative is so huge. Twilight Guardian's a pretty good minion just to stick out a little bit, get some damage on that Curator for a potential clear up with the Alex Draza's champion next turn as well. But uh, Savitz has got a lot of options. He has used Reno though, and Kazakus. And Dark Emperor Taunt. So, yeah, so his big sort of power plays for safety aren't really available anymore, so he still has to kind of be a little bit careful to the extent where we're seeing Blast Crystal now, which is nice. Tempo Crystal. Tempo Crystal. So good. Four mana killer minion. All you have to do is hand over a mana crystal, which on turn 10 onwards, you actually get the crystal back anyway. So super cool card. Emperor's going to be left up by a Lux thing as Hafu's just saying, I've just got to go for it. Yeah, now the big arena lock minions bully out the Dragon Warrior out of the, of the yeah. game. Especially because there's Demon Wrath as well to clear off that Fairy Dragon. Means that there's pretty much nothing, oh. or is that just 15? Oh, no, it's not quite. No Hellfire. I wouldn't even mind Shadow Bolt being used as well. Like just Demon Wrath, no. Shadow Bolt. You, you get so far ahead with the minions if you just put the M Gang Boss down that you're not really afraid of anything going forward. Because Emperor's still going to live, he's still going to get the reduction as well. 
Yeah, you just play stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you don't live tab. Top notch advice, Kara. Just play all Just play stuff. stuff. Play, play stuff and you win. It's true though. Yeah, it works every time. Play yeah. cards and you will win eventually. Coin for good luck. I would use the coin here for good luck. <laughs> I think Savitz is beyond Mistake. the point of needing luck at Mist this. Mistake. <laughs> Direct. He's saving display. the coin for next for next game. That's also pretty smart. Oh, you can carry the coin, uh, coin over. I didn't realize. <clears throat> Well, no matter what Hafu does here, she is going to die next turn, no matter if she plays the monkey or not. Yep, the taunt's not going to be enough. The problem is as well, at this point in the game, the odds on them like not having Leroy or Power Overwhelming are like so low. Right, so Savis takes game number four, tying up the series here, two, two apiece. But now you got to think about the last game. It's going to be Reedlock versus Druid. And I feel like Savis in this particular scenario kind of did the missequencing here when it comes to picking his decks. If he go, went for the Reno Lock right away instead of trying his luck with Priest, he and and uh, defeated and uh, and defeated the, the uh, Dragon Warrior, the Dragon Warrior right here. He still would have had his Priest up to counter the Druid. Yeah, and I think that's the thing as well. Uh, you know, as far as I can tell, the Druid list has been played and built to a certain extent to, to kill Reno because of the huge like OTK aspect into the deck. So yeah, you know, we'll see if this... Uh... Did she play actually the, uh, the combo cards or just taunts? Like she played double Druid of the Claw, double War? Yeah, she played, uh, she still has uh, Aviana Kuhn. Yeah, yeah but does he play the combo? Yeah, well, there's Moonfire in the deck, so... Okay. Yeah. I guess it's the... There probably is a Maligos in there. Yeah. It would be weird not to for the point of one oh, card. That's your answer. Yeah. Double innovate is pretty good in the starting hand with a yeah. deck like this. We saw we saw Hafu beat Torque um, with that with hey, start open. here. Yeah. Turn two Druid of the Claw was it against him? And here it could be turn one Druid of the Claw. Do you want to go? Wow. Okay. Top. Bling. I guess the good thing here is you, you can actually beat the uh, the Doomsayer because of Living Roots coin hero power yeah. as well. So I think. If that wasn't available, I would be very worried about doing this because your hand is literally nothing else. Uh, but because Hafu can beat the Doomsayer this turn if it came down, she's in a really good position. This might just be too fast from Savid's. Oh, man. Oh, Blast Crystal. Okay. I was really hoping for a Dirty Rat draw there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dirty Rat concede. <laughs> That'll be the play. It's like how fast can we reduce Savid's life pool here? Both players are working towards the... Yeah, and for, and for those people who aren't like fully aware of this Druid deck, it effectively plays Aviana, which makes your minions cost one, and then you play Kuhn to go up to 10 mana. So we see the Living Roots used quite liberally here, just as tokens, because you don't actually just need Living Roots to win. A lot of the time you can do the full combo, drop down Maligos, even faceless it, and then still have mana for Swipe, oh. Starfire, you know, even just other Living Roots, moon, moon fires, so on. Wait, do a hell of a lot she of went damage. for Crystals, that was not right, right? Well, she just wants to get up into that. Look at the three minions in her hand. Exactly. Like she wants yeah, to because get of close to the range. <laughs> because of the minions. No, you just get to them quick. It's fine. But what do you do with them? Oh, okay. So, Savitz is actually yeah, and he found just Reno. about stabilized and has Reno for next turn. I think she lost because she went for mana. Like, no no joke. Yeah. Um, you would You would think that you might... Would, it, that you'd rather draw into more burst cards, uh, so you can close out the game even before you get to that stage where you can, where you have to rely on Aviana. I, th I think the thing as well is even with the ramp, by the time you get to ten for Aviana into the coon to play everything, even if you just want to splurge minions onto the board, well, you you match up directly against Twisted Nether at that point. So there is actually just one card that loses you the game if that's your plan, regardless. It's going to be a tough one now for Hafu actually. Oh, there we go. Never mind. It's oh. going to be too tough. Yeah, and Zavitz well, takes was, it. The series was so quick, oh, like over. I know. Like the, even the control matchup was the fastest. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> even <laughs> though it went to all five games. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way as well. We're like, right, okay, you know. So it's like the Reno lock, generally a slow deck versus a deck that has a, a turn ten like ridiculous combo, and it's just like yeah, I can see. It. Yeah, it was. In, he had the best card versus Druid actually with the giant into Shambler yeah. and then a Reno too. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's exactly what Druid is struggling against the most when playing against Real Lock. You struggle against those big minions that come down early, the Mountain Giant, the Twilight Drake, and then if you copy them with the Shambler or the It's just too much, right? It's just too much. It's kind of crazy. So Savitz wasn't really uh, uh, too punished by saving his Reno Lock, kind of got away with it in the end. I think he's, uh, I think he's just chatting, but he should come over. Savitz! Here he is. We got him. We can shift up. <coughs> Let's get cozy team. Yo, is this working? Yes, it is. Congratulations, Savitz. That thank was you, a pretty you. close series. Were you um, worried going into the last game knowing, because I'm guessing you knew what uh, what Hafu's Druid deck was, right? Yeah, I kind of. I was a little bit worried. I knew that there's like mulch. So if my first giant or first threat on turn four gets mulch, especially after that uh, really fast start uh, from her with the double inner weight, I was kind of worried. But when I saw there's no mulch and I got the Reno, I'm like, OK, I'm good. <laughs> just about survived. Um, what was the uh, reasoning? I know, like e Ecob was running this, like for the the priest pick first before the Reno, because if you use Reno to beat the Dragon Warrior, then you have like priest as a backup versus that Druid list. Yeah, that was actually I I, I kind of ended up regretting it. It was, <laughs> it, was a, it was a poor choice. Let's just say that I, I should definitely pick the not not priest first. But uh, I thought that priest has a better matchup against the Dragon Warrior. Honestly, I, I didn't practice it all that much. I've been playing more like Reno decks and other <laughs> other decks, so I was a little bit unsure about the, the Priest matchups in general. I think the deck is strong, but I, I'm not fa as familiar with the matchup as I should have been. Um, yeah, I figured out pretty fast that it, it, was a, it was a really poor choice. I should have just went with the Warlock <laughs> instead for multiple reasons. Because uh, you just like the like, deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like also to have the, the maybe... Because the, the Warlock very, very well might struggle against the Druid, so it would be nice to try to play the Warlock against the Warrior instead of the Druid. There were many reasons, so mm -hmm. that was a whoopsie. But I think in-game that my decision-making was, uh, was pretty good, and I'm happy about the series. Yeah, yeah, definitely a, well played. Yeah, yeah, it was a super fun series to watch overall. Um, well, because you, you know, you're getting very quickly known for like Reno decks, uh, especially because the recent performance on Ladder, of course. Uh, but how come you didn't bring Reno Priest? Like, I'm kind of disappointed to be it's called. Like, why about why it, standard Dragon Priest come yeah, on? Yeah, I was thinking about it for a while, but it's just... The, the early game just seems so inconsistent. You So many times you, you kind of miss out on turn two or three. One of those turns is going to be too weak, and then uh, in a tournament the environment, I think there's too much catching up to do after that. The AoE is like, you only have one of Dragon Fire Potion, you only have one of Kazakus Potion, we might not even get the Flame Strike from it. Yeah. So the reason why I didn't bring it was that it turns from one to four, through uh, three, let's say those those turns, uh, just the inconsistency. So I felt like the Dragon Priest is more solid, it curves out well, and uh, with the Dragon it operatives, you still have a solid late game against the control decks. Yeah, awesome. Well, congratulations again. You are through in the like the winners uh, bracket of Group A. So that's yeah, awesome. It feels can, good, man. Yeah, I mean, you can just relax. Through, I can just relax for a couple of days for today and, and for tomorrow as well. So, yeah, so you think awesome. you can make it happen? Two times Seed Story Cup champion? No, eventually I'm, somebody's not going to ban this Druid and I'm going to have to play it. So <laughs> <laughs> there's some surprises there. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, there you go. Don't tell that to everyone. You <laughs> just announced it to the whole stream out uh, to all uh, the players. I don't really care. It's, 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 it's going to be a lot of fun and they're beneath the crown so also. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, she didn't draw any of those in the first four or five turns. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it uh, can happen, and uh, that's not exactly the matchup I had it for. But it's gonna work out, okay? Okay. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll let you chill out for the rest of the day. Thanks a lot, guys, for casting with me. Uh, we're gonna be back after a break with the next match, so don't go anywhere, guys. This is Seat Story Six.